You know, uh, to be honest with you, we can't honor him if it had not been for her. Amen. 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 Amen.
We need to know what a deacon is. He's one that's called out, one that who is to serve, and to serve who is to express serve the pastor and the congregation. And a deacon must be holding the ministry of the faith in pure conscience. That means that you stand on the word of God. And that means your faith should not fail you. You boldly stand up for God and tell dying men and women whose side you are on. And you are on Jesus' side. And let and, and let these also first be true, and then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. And also it's talking to the wives too. It says, even so must their wives be grave. And we know what grave, we just told you quiet and, and serious in their opinion and behavior. And also not slavery, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husband of one wife, ruling their children and their own household well, which means take care of your own business, mind your business, and keep your household in, in order before you try to help anybody else's household. <laughs> if they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Deacon Franklin, we are so honored to have you here as a deacon. You do your job, you do it well. And we thank you. And God bless you. And may you have a wonderful week and day. Wonderful job out here. Very old. First night of Sister Joseph. Thank you. Give her another round of applause. Amen. Amen. Talking about our deacon. Amen. Amen. What an honor yeah. to have such a wonderful deacon, God. I'm going to be very thankful for Dean. Yeah. He is just such a giver by nature. I mean, um, you know, you're talking about selflessness. I mean, he's there for the pastor, anything needed at the church. Like, he's not the type to say, oh, well, this needs to be done, that needs to be done. It's like, oh, I already did this, I already did that. And we love it and lead by example. And I just love that about you because the only way you can be a great leader. You had to know how to be a good follower. And so I thank God for your following ability. And God elevated you in the leadership. Come on now! <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! All right, y'all. Uh, we're going to have a song next by our very own Sister Tyron. Oh, thank you. Oh, she went in the kitchen. Okay. Get that off. Uh, I just want to say congratulations, first of all. I mean, it's an honor to have special gifts by the main gifts that I'm going to be um, I'm going to sing a song right quick, and I want the congregation to please go along with me. I'm longing to be somewhere. Yeah. 
from Sister Talanda. We have a poem by Brother Alvin Forte. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
But you don't want Ch Chaz to report. He won't be able to fold those up and carry it. You don't get all the $1 going to bring you a chair that you can put on the porch. And you can fold it up when you get ready to go in the house. Oh, that's it. 
this part. I'm going to stop talking because I know y'all going to hear that word from on high. Yeah. Hallelujah. So now we can turn over um, the rest of the program into the hands of our wonderful Pastor Alan Forte. Some of y'all. I was humble, maybe few, but our love is greater. And that's what is more important. You have to have the love of God for the people of God. But I must say, I'm on this Saturday also. We, we didn't have this. So we want to thank you, me and his mother. Because without you, we wouldn't have no need to and we thank the Lord for you. Amen. <laughs> now, we have given you our love. Now we're going to give you God's word. Amen. God's word is true. No matter whether we like it or not. Here too not. No matter whether we accept it or not. Here too not. No matter whether we learn from it or not. No matter if we said we don't even see it that way, it don't stop. The word of God from being the truth. When we reject the word of God, we reject the truth. And when we reject truth, we are actually rejecting God himself. Because he is the truth. When we say, I don't like the truth, we're telling God, I don't like it. Watch that, man. the word is the truth. When the word of God tells us something, we say, I don't see it that way. Been telling God, I don't see you being the truth. What's that now? So I look at it the way that I want to. I'm going to ask that you turn with me because this is not a coincidence today. Between Sister Forte, Robert Forte, the things that have been said is just like they were looking over my shoulder <laughs> when the Lord was speaking to me about words today. We're going to turn to the book of Acts. And I'm going to ask that you turn to the seventh chapter of Acts. And while you're getting there, I'm going to go before the Lord in prayer. And we're going to pinpoint the 51st verse down through the 60th verse, chapter 7 of Acts, verses 51 through 60. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come today, Lord, with thanksgiving in our heart that you have allowed us, Lord, to come together in your house to celebrate an office, Lord, that you have placed here. And Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you will give us a word, not only to him, but to all of us, Lord. Help us to grow in you and your will and your way. Help us to grow in your word and understanding that we may be able to walk and live a life that is pleasing to your sight. Help us, Lord, to follow the gospel and turn loose the gospel. And Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you will anoint your mind right now to think the thoughts that you would have in today, to anoint my tongue and lips to speak the words that you would have in speak. We ask that you will anoint the ears of your people to receive your word. Well, we ask that you fly the ground of our hearts that your word may be planted in our hearts. And Lord, that we may bring forth the fruit that is truly pleasing in your sight. And Father, if you grant us these things, we will give you honor and glory. I turn myself over to you right now today to have your way with this old tent that's been set up for a little while. And Lord, we ask your blessing to be upon this world and upon this country. We ask your blessing to be upon those that may in war right now. We ask your blessing to be upon those that are on the borderline of war. We ask that you will take care of those that are on the run and have lost everything that they have. But Lord, we ask that you will give them a mind to seek you, knowing that your kingdom is not of this world and these things of this world shall be left behind. And help us to get our minds stood fast on the eternal thing. And Lord, that we may be able to please you in our life. And at the end of the last breath, that we will give you say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. And Father, we ask that you will bless the offering that is 
we're going to lift it for the other end of the kingdom. This time, my friend, those that have given themselves to you to do your will. The Lord, right now, we're going to turn this over to you that you have your way in this place. We love you. We praise you. We need you. Now, anoint me and fill me with your spirit to preach your word. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. 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 And we prepare for the word of God. <coughs> Acts the seventh chapter, verses fifty-one through sixty. We'll read responsibly today. But before we get started, we got to keep in mind our pledge. Are we ready for our pledge? This is my, my Bible. My, my best instructions before leaving earth. It is the word of God. I will stand and show myself approved unto God. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Because God said it. I believe it. And that's it. In the name of Jesus. I read verse 51. You read 52. And we are reading 60 together. Are we ready? I'm reading from the new King James Version. Verse 51 says, You stiff neck and uncircumcised circumcised in heart and ear. You always resist the Holy Spirit as your father did, so do you. Which of the prophets did persecute and they kill those that are fourfold and un for whom you not become betrayers and murderers who have received the law by the direction of the angel and have not kept it when we heard these things we were cut to the heart and were garnished in him in chief but he being full of the Holy Ghost, gazed into him, saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And said, Look, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing in the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice. They stopped at him and ran at him with one accord. And they and him, him, and stoned him, and the witness laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. And they stoned Stephen. Stephen. They stoned Stephen as he was called, calling on God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit altogether. Then and they knelt down and cried out to a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and a special blessing to the doer of his word. If I were you to say it today, deep, it would be the deacon that gave his life for the truth. The deacon that gave his life for the truth. You don't have many people give their life for the truth. No, but let me say that one more time. The deacon that gave his life for the truth. Now, this is the birth and the growth of the church. The first mark, the first one to die because of the truth was Stephen. And this is a, a Bible study of modern, modern. And that's what all of us might become when we're persecuted, but that means that you gave your life. And any time that a person gives their life, that's all that they can give. Mm -hmm. Now, Stephen, and what had happened is they brought Stephen. And they wanted him to plead his case. But instead of actually defending himself, Stephen preached about the tragic failure 
of the people to follow and obey God. So he made eight severe charges against the nation, including the murder of the righteous one, God's very own son. His message had been effective and convicted. And that was the problem because conviction can go either way. You see, a person, when they're convicted, they can accept their conviction and make changes or they can come against their conviction. It can either call a person to turn to God by confessing his sin or it can call a person to react against God. And that's what we do so many times. We act against God and it's true. Now tell to bring us a little bit to piggyback off some of the things that have been said. You see, Sister Forte made the qualification yeah. of a deed. Yeah. And that's unaware to me. I don't know anything about it until this morning. But she gave the qualifications of a deed. You see, one of the things, he had to also be able to rule over his houseway. Yeah. Now, ruling your houseway, it means that you got to know how to make decisions. Yes, sir. It means that you got to know how to put priority first. Yeah. And, and, and leading your household, it means that you're making decisions for your house. Now, what am I headed to with this? You see, before we can make decisions as leaders of God's house, we got to also know how to make decisions of our own house. If we cannot make decisions of our own house, how can we make decisions in God's house? What's that now? So now we, the qualifications have been given, but Brother Forte, he came and he talked about the choosing. The choosing of the deep. We'll find this in the sixth chapter of Acts. And it says that, the Bible says, as you read that, they were told to look out among them. What was happening to them is that the pastor, the leader, the apostle of the church, they were preaching and teaching, but they were having to care for all of the other men. So it says to look out among you. And you choose seven men that's for the only go. Y'all need to get that far. Been born again. Yeah. So now, y'all need to get this. The church came together to choose a leader that was qualified from within them. When they took the leader, they brought the leader that they chose to the power. Yes, See, we need to get this because there is authority and position. In God's plan, and when we get out of our authority or out of our position, we cause problems in the house of God. Mm-hmm. Now, I want you to look at the leaders of the church, the apostles in the beginning. Who chose me? God did. Mm-hmm. Who chose the people? The church did. So now you need to understand that the election of the officer came from the church. There are two ways the people will be made. He's going to be made by the authority of the church to bring to the pastor, or the church, the pastor himself, will choose one that's qualified to work with who? The pastor. Amen. Now, I want to say I thank God that the Lord has sent an officer here that knows his place. Amen. Now, how do I know that? Because we had problems just like any other house has problems. We're not immune to problems. But there was something said by him to me that let me knew that he was following the leadership of God. And what he told me one day was, he said, Pastor, he said, a vision wasn't given to me. Y'all didn't get that. That much the Lord. All of come down. In the house of God now, we have all of going up and they have no business going up. That is going against the will of God. That is no officer called Deacon in the church that tells the pastor what he should be doing. Yes, he because the pastor all come from God himself. And the owner of the Deacon is the one with the pastor as God has directed you. Did you not? Now you go past. You're not following Christ. The Bible says you should come out from among the them. Because we are believers to be led in the way of God through the word of God to do the will of God that we may be pleased, that God may be pleased with us, that at the end of everything, he's the one that said, well done. Yeah, too, bad. too many times our well done want to come from our city. Mm. What? 
จันนะ So I thank God to know that there is an o f f e r that understand that there is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the angel of the church, which is the pastor. Then the officers of the church. And then you have the congregation. And the congregation don't care t h e people with it. What's that now? We need to understand our place. I remember some years ago, Brother Fraser Jones, mm. one of the last sermons that I heard him preach. His subject was, "Know your place. Huh? Get, in. Get in your place. Oh. Stay in and stay in your place." I never forget the subject. The subject itself was a sign to me. To know your place, get in your place, yes. and then stay in your place. I'm gonna say again, all is gonna go up. Yeah. But now I want you to see something. What he did was the deacon of the church, and that's something you have to follow. I think about too many times us as pastors and preachers, we look down on preaching deacon we call because we feel threatened of our position. But I'm here to tell you today, a deacon should be able to bring a word. Mm-hmm. You see, if the pastor is not there, then don't take another preacher to come in. The man of God has already been placed there. He's been placed under the man of God, and guess what? He should be able to bring a word. Very true, now. But you know what? Most of the time, the problem is the problem is the deacon ain't there. What's that now? And he said, "He sure can't give him away." What's that now? So now he it is. Stephen is supposed to be defending himself. Why? Because his life is on the line. But instead, Stephen said, "I was chosen by the church. It was also clear by the apostle. I've been filled with His Spirit, and I'm going to stand here and tell you." What does that mean, Lord? And Stephen started to tell them who they were and what they had done, how they had fallen short of the glory of God, being chosen by God. And when we look at verse fifty-one here, the first thing it says, "You stiff-necked, you hard-necked, you're stubborn." You see, some people are just so stubborn that even when you give them the truth. You show them the truth. They don't like the truth. I don't want to hear it from that person. I don't like what he's saying. It's on this person. I'm gonna reject it. So what did you reject? No. You're rejecting the Lord yes. because God is the truth. Mm. And the message of God is supposed to tell you the what they said the Lord. Mm-hmm. He turned around and said, "You still get uncircumcised." Uncircumcised and mean that they were heathen or pagans. They were lost. They were alienated from God. They were full of false worship. They lived ungodly lives. It's an uncircumcised prayer in your heart. Mm. Remember, it is the heart of man that is corrupt. And mm. your ears. Why is it your ears located in this and say your heart and your ears? Because my ears don't want to hear the truth. What's that now? It is my ears that say I don't want to hear that. It is my ears that say I'm not there, although I'm looking there and I'm seeing that it's me, but I'm not there. He said you always resist the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, which is true that brings you the truth. You hear the truth. You reject the truth from your ear. You reject it from your heart, and you're rejecting and resisting the Holy Spirit. How many times the Spirit of God has told that your heart to do something you resist? Watch out now. We should not resist the Spirit of God. Why? Because we don't know if that's the last time we're going to do it. It said, "As your fathers did." Oh, let me make this clear. What fathers? We're gonna have to go back to the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have to look at what the first set of believers did that God has chosen. This why they went around in the desert for forty years, so that everyone that did not believe God they said what God had told them died in the wilderness. So what is he saying? Just that your father rejected the truth. Just that your father's mama and grandma against God. Just that your father 
same thing that you have done. It says that your father did and so did you. Which of the prophets did your father not persecute? This is what they're saying, not persecute. To resist means you struggle against them or fight against them. So now, when we see what they said, which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? Mm. Now, watch this thing. Mm. The Bible here is talking to the believers. He's not talking to unbelievers. He's talking about the believers that have rejected the truth. What prophet? The Bible is asking you, what prophet has God sent that you don't persecute? Now, first of all, let's establish some ground here. What is a prophet? That might need to be the question to answer. A prophet is a preacher that allows God to speak through him, to use him. The Holy Spirit controls him. The word of God comes from him and is coming by the Spirit of God. And if you tell people the truth, I will witness what the Bible is saying. You will be persecuted. There's no end. There's no end. There's no but. You're going to be talked about. You're going to be lied on. You're going to be ostracized. Family's going to come against you. Friends going to leave you. But guess what? Jesus said, I never leave you. Say it too, now. He said, I never forsake you. He said, they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one. Who is the just one, Jesus? Jesus Christ. The coming of Christ. The Messiah. Of whom you now have become the betrayer and murderer. Hold on, Stephen is turning around and telling the one that's a believer, mm. you killed him. I don't want to hear that. You murdered God. Mm. I don't want to hear that. You betrayed God. Let me tell you something, church. If we say that we are Christ black, Christian, we are believers. Any time that we serve that other fellow in whatever way we're betrayed to God. We the Bible says that we cannot serve two masters. We're gonna love one and we're gonna hate the other. Y'all need to get this. We're gonna love to do what I want to do. And we're gonna hate you telling them to. Watch out now. I love seeing things my way. But I hate you showing me my way wrong. Watch out now. I love for me to be a good person. But I hate for you to show me I'm a bad person. And I'm here to tell you, yes, you're bad. I'm bad. And every human being on earth is bad. Because the Bible said there's not one good. No, not one. So if it's not one that's a good one, you ain't. Say it too, now. It says in verse 53, it says, Who have received the law by the direction of angels and have not kept? I'm going to pass the brain to the truth. And this is what we'll start saying. He the man of God and chosen by God, but I'll let it say, He's just a man. Like me. I'm a man just like He is. I know God just like He is. I pray. Just like he prayed. But I got a question for you. Did God choose you? Watch out now. Did, did he let you? God bless my man. All of us have a responsibility to God and we should do. I agree with that 110%. Mm -hmm. But all of us have not been chosen by God to carry his word to a parent world. And I've come to find out it ain't meant that way. Get too nah. It's easy to compromise the truth so I can get along with you. It's easy for me to feel the hot by telling you jokes and making you feel good. Prosperity. It's easy for me to build up my congregation. But what about God's kingdom? Right. What's that now? We supposed to be building on the kingdom of God. Right. Not a contradiction for ourselves to talk about how many members I got. I don't have anything. Including myself. I'm only a servant that's been chosen by God to oversee the souls that belong to God and bring them souls to Him and Him alone. Okay. Yeah. 
You follow me as I follow him, and if I ain't following him, you don't need to be following me. Get it too now. And I say that again, I'll stand on it in the white house. Okay. And I'm talking about me. So you can't say I'm talking about some other preacher. You talk about yourself. I'm talking about me. If I'm not following Christ, don't you follow me. Amen. If I'm living the word of life, don't you be following me. If you say that I'm a liar, don't you be following no liar. You did it too, lie. Okay. <laughs> because if I'm going to lie to you from here, if I lie to you from there, I'm a liar. Yeah, right. And if you say, well, you know, my path is a liar, I can't tell you. You follow me. What's that now? Some people say, I ain't following that man. What's that now? God has laid down a choice. And God has not changed his choice. You go back when God first delivered his people. The first thing he did was start laying out who's going to be Levi. He started with Moses and the one to stand his Christ. But he said, Your brother Abraham is going to be the chief priest. And then he turned around every chief priest that come under Abraham and from the bloodline of Abraham. Then he turned around and he said, I'm Levi, so we're going to choose them to be the workers in the house of God. In other words, God is the one that chooses those that work in his house. You see, although the church looked out among you and you saw this brother, but it was God that directed in the spirit who it is to see. He said, the Bible said, oh, that have a feel with the Holy Spirit. How can you see the Holy Spirit if you don't see a person life living as though that Holy Spirit is leading them? We should not have deacons that say the deacon of the church can't see about the ladies of the church. We should have deacons that love God more than he loves. The benefit of a few things we want. To the two now. We should be serving God and do our faith. And not the world, not the world system. And the world have a system. And it's system to see. But let me go on with this. Where did I stop this? Verse 54 says, When they heard these things, they were catching the hope. Hey, what thing? The truth? Wait a minute. Telling you about yourself. And it said, When they heard the truth, it cut them to their heart. They they grabbed with their teeth. <laughs> you know how much you write this way? You're gonna grind on the teeth. That makes you know right now you're in a bad place. You get out of here. All of this is because of what? True. The truth cut to their heart. The response of their heart was anger. Not darkness sorrow. Not to repent. Not to turn. But they grabbed their teeth and went to fight and grind. Like a pack of snarling dogs. If you see a pack of dogs, wild dogs come at you, it starts to and you tell them you're going to eat you. I'm going to attack you. So now here it is. The grass was at the teeth. They were filled with anger. They were filled with malice. Why were they filled with anger? Because the truth had been pointed out to them by the man of God. The deacon that gave his life for the truth. How can I lay down your life for the truth? Because the person want to kill you because you tell them the truth? Mm-hmm. But guess what I don't find out in life? Mm-hmm. It ain't many people standing to tell them the truth to their face. Mm-hmm. What's that now? We like to tell the truth about a person when they walk off. Mm-hmm. It said, they were grasping at their teeth. So now, verse 55 says, but he being full oh, no, of the Holy Spirit, I'm with the Lord. Gave into heaven and saw the glory, the glory of God. Mm. He said, Jesus standing mm-hmm. at the right hand of God. Mm. Why would Jesus stand at the right hand of God? The Bible always said. When it talks about Jesus, he said that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God. Why was he standing? He was standing for his servant, his suffering servant. God was standing because Stephen was pleading him by telling the truth. God was standing because he let him know where well I am. He was standing because he said, I'm getting ready. To receive you to myself. He died by his seat because he was standing to say you on the right track. You're pleasing me. Keep up the good work because I'm going to come and get you. Look at what it says here for 50, 
mm -hmm. of heaven. Mm -hmm. He gave them the opportunity to see into the spiritual world, mm -hmm. to see into the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. He was so close to God that God allowed him to see and then to witness to those that standing around him that God is standing in heaven. And he told him, he said, look, look, I see it ever open. And the son of man standing at the right hand of God. And then they cried out with a lot of voice, stopping their ears like little children. You know how children do when they don't want to hear something? Yeah. We got to repent and turn from our sin. We cannot expect to live in sin and expect God's grace to the mind. Sin separates us from God. That's why they sent his son in the place. Because we were separated from God. It said they cast him down. I mean, cast him out of the city. And stone. Hold on. I don't want to hear the truth. Kill him. So what am I going to do to the truth? I want to kill him. Watch out now. I'm going to kill the person that's telling the truth. I kill a person character. I kill them by their past. I kill them by lies. I kill them with deceit. What's that now? I kill them with do you remember? Oh, I want to tear down that character so you won't believe the truth. I want to kill him. And it said that they stoned him. The witnesses laid down the cloth at the feet of a young man so. named Saul. Oh, oh God, that was a bad mistake. They had one of the greatest men to ever be for the Lord standing there by the name of Saul. Saul was a persecutor at the church. Saul at the time was a young man. And Saul was one that had high laws. He was one that was hunting the church down to kill it. They took Stephen's clothes and threw it at the foot of that great man. When the great man had a desire, his desire was to really do the will of God. And he thought that he was doing it when he was killing the persecutors at the church because he thought that they were liars and deceivers. And he called him when he heard Stephen say, Look, look, don't you see it? I see the heaven on that Jesus. He's standing at the right hand of his father. I can imagine in my mind, Steve, as the father is looking, he's looking up to heaven. This is what Saul is saying, Where? Where is he? Ah, they see it. Where is he? Don't worry, Saul. He's going to show us that to you later, Saul. But right now, see him being planted in your heart to give you a hunger and a desire to come out of him. It said that verse 59, and they stoned Stephen as he was calling. 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 So I said, he calling on the God that I, that I thought I was doing the right thing for him. He called on the God. I won't see that God. The heaven and the Lord, I can't see anything. Why you can you see it, son? Because you've never been born of the Spirit. The Bible said he who is of Spirit. His Spirit means you can understand the things of the Spirit. But he who is born of flesh is flesh. And can only understand the things of the flesh. And it said that, saying, they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God. And saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Lord, see my spirit. Well, I mean, I remember some 20 something years ago, I was in a bad accident. And I was on burning up in my meter. My leg, I was trapped and I couldn't get out. And I remember. I gave up that day because I didn't see nowhere else. 
And I remember saying these same words. I said, Lord, in your hand, I commend my spirit. But God said, no, I'm not trying to get God said, an angel, you bring me out of that fight to lose my leg. You see, no matter where we are, we're never where God did not reach us. We're never in no trouble. Praise 